Next on Good Morning Alabama at 430, a duller 4th of July holiday. The new impacts local fireworks stands are dealing with as we approach Independence Day. Rushing to hire enough teachers for the new school year. How local districts are getting creative to lure educators into the classroom. Building for the future to keep your family safe. The city of Trussville says the new fire station will help in several ways. Addressing criticism in one Shelby County city, the new changes coming to Calera after ABC 3340 starts asking questions. We'll also get a check on the forecast for the day ahead. We'll see you right here on GMA. This is ABC 3340's Good Morning Alabama. Good morning, Alabama. It is 430 on this Thursday morning, June 24th. We're so glad you're here starting the day with us. We start this half hour with a live look outside as we are heading into the weekend. Never too early to think about the weekend, right? Meteorologist Evan Chikvera starts this off. And Evan, the thing I noticed when I went outside this morning is the moon is gorgeous. It's so bright and pretty. Absolutely gorgeous. There's a little bit, depending on where you're at, of a pink tint to it. It's the strawberry moon. It's actually the final super moon or full moon of 2021. Hey, there you go. And it will actually be visible from now through Friday. If you didn't get a chance to see it, it is actually setting as we speak. But tonight, if you get out there and you look initially to the east and then about this time around 3 a.m. to the west, you'll see it beautiful, larger than you might expect and a little pink tint to it. So. Good reason to get outside. It is. And it feels great out there this morning, too. Yeah, this looks like, Sarah, I think it will be our last morning where we'll have some of those slightly cooler temperatures out there. I did notice it was a little bit more muggy by yesterday evening. I was outside. And I noticed, all right, it started to get a little bit more humid throughout the day, but we're still relatively comfortable in a few areas. Haleyville up there is at 61 degrees, 67 in Coleman. We have one, as I mentioned yesterday, not the widespread 50s that we had on Wednesday morning, but up in Blount County, 58 degree reading. Pell City and Anniston between about 66 and 69 degrees with just a few clouds out there. As far as visibility goes, because we have a slow increase in that surface moisture, as we get closer to daybreak, some of those uh, areas of lower elevation may see a little bit of pooling of moisture and a little bit of fog. Right now, visibility is all good, and if you are getting ready to head out within the next 30 minutes, I don't anticipate that being a problem. Your 6 a.m. planner through 8 o'clock, basically your morning commute here as you're getting ready to head off to work or out and about, whatever you may be doing, starting in the mid to upper 60s and eventually in the 70s. Now, as far as our headlines and what we're watching, that full strawberry moon, we touched on that a little bit. You'll be able to see that. I'll let you know the best timing to see that the next couple of days. We're primarily dry through Saturday. Those rain chances have backed off just a little bit. Highs will be in the upper 80s to near 90. And once again, keeping an eye on the tropics. All that coming up in just a few. Breaking news overnight, a Florida officer is seriously hurt and police say a shooter is on the loose. This is the scene down in Florida near the Orlando area. Police say the Daytona Beach officer was investigating a report of something suspicious. He found 29 year old Awful Wallace in a car with California plates. Body cam footage shows what happened next. Now we do want to warn you, this may be tough to watch. Don't do this. Sit down. Why are you asking me do Sit I down. live here? Do you live here? Yes or no? What's going on though? Charlie 77. No, back up. Stop. 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 Stop, man. Police say Wallace shot the officer once in the head, then got away. That officer now in serious condition. Right now, there's a $100,000 reward to help authorities find Wallace. Police say he is armed and dangerous. We'll have updates as we get them now closer to home. A Birmingham man is in the hospital after he was shot several times at an apartment complex. Investigators say that shooting happened at the Onyx apartment complex on Erline Circle in Northeast Birmingham Wednesday night. Right now, police officers still searching for that shooter. We'll have updates as soon as we learn more. New this morning, the city of Tuscaloosa says it could cost at least $4 million to fix damage that Claudette caused to major water and sewer lines over the weekend. That is according to our partner, the Tuscaloosa News. It comes as more than 100 people in Northport are still without a home. This morning, the Red Cross is looking for more Spanish-speaking volunteers to help out at Northport Baptist Church.
from what we saw, the majority of them were Spanish-speaking people. Um, and, you know, that's hard to trust when someone comes in and, you know, they're flooding the area trying to get them um, what they need, you know, but they need to hear from people that this is a safe place to come, yeah. And we have resources here to give them. We have a shelter for them to stay. We have three hot meals per day being provided to them. Um, we have financial assistance to help them get rehoused again. This Saturday, volunteers will be at the Willowbrook Mobile Home Community in Northport to help storm victims. It starts at 8 a.m. Saturday morning. Local communities continue to come together to support the families of the 10 people killed in this pileup crash on I-65 in South Alabama. New this morning, more than half a million dollars have been donated across three GoFundMe accounts for the victims. This is according to our partner, the Tuscaloosa News. Investigators believe wet roads and hydroplaning were likely factors in the Butler County crash. We're also tracking new details from Washington, D.C. on this pedestrian bridge collapse, which injured several people. New this morning, new documents show that the bridge had undergone recent repairs and was rated in, quote, poor condition. Leaders believe a truck hit the bridge on Highway 295, leading to its collapse. Parts of Highway 295 are expected to reopen later on today. Also happening today, lawmakers could finally have an infrastructure deal done. Senators on both sides of the aisle say that there is agreement and they will meet with the president today to talk about it. Britt Conway looks at what happens next. Deal making in D.C. with infrastructure and policing front and center. The divisions of the moment shouldn't stop us from doing the right thing for the future. But the division remains and the countdown is on. The Senate is getting ready to start a two week recess with infrastructure. We're talking improvement to roads, bridges, water systems, technology, climate related measures, manufacturing, research and development and the caregiving economy and how to pay for it all. But senators on both sides of the aisle say there's an agreement on a bipartisan deal. And today at the White House, they're expected to talk about it with the president. But will it be enough? Depends on who you ask. My sense is that that deal right now has 20 votes, not 60 votes. Um, we're going to have to take a deep dive into the agreement. Last week, I heard from a lot of my colleagues saying, I just need to look at one other issue. You know, can you do this? Can you do that? But uh, there's, there's a lot of interest in having a bipartisan proposal. Same goes for police reform, but that hasn't been easy either. With debate over the standard for charging police officers with crimes and qualified immunity, so police officers can be sued in civil court. A lead senator on the negotiations says today may be a make or break day. All told, it could be a make or break day for Biden. I'm Britt Conway reporting. The July 4th recess begins at the end of the week. Happening tomorrow, Vice President Kamala Harris will make her first trip to the U.S.-Mexico border. She will visit El Paso, Texas. Tomorrow's visit comes as Harris is facing growing criticism from both parties. She will make the trip with Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. Now, tomorrow's trip to the southern border comes just hours after the U.S. Border Patrol chief said he is stepping down. Rodney Scott was appointed by former President Trump. He has served less than two years as chief. The effort to recall California Governor Gavin Newsom is moving forward. More than 1.7 million verified signatures are enough to trigger a recall election. As of this morning, the state's finance department is still going over just how much the recall will cost. That final number must be submitted by August 5th. That will be followed by a 30 day review and a comment period. Rushing to hire enough teachers for this new school year. Still ahead this morning, how local districts are getting creative to lure educators into the classroom. But first, your July 4th fireworks show might be a little dull this year. The new impacts local fireworks stands are dealing with as we approach Independence Day. Well, good morning and welcome back. And here we are on a Thursday, but it's never too early, as we said, to look ahead to the weekend. We had some really nice, cool air in place 
on Wednesday morning. Still in some of our fringe northern counties, seeing some cooler temperatures. Aniana there in Blount County at 58 degrees. That sensor typically runs a little bit cooler. I'd say for the most part, if you're there in Blount County, you look at the edge of Je northern Jefferson County. We're in the upper 60s to lower 70s. I don't think the majority of uh, that county there is in the 50s. But nevertheless, another partly cloudy start to the day today. What we're going to see here as we move forward, this stationary boundary is showing a kind of a sag to the south. This is actually going to end up dissipating and we're slowly going to welcome back in. We're not welcome back in, but we're going to see a pattern where we see a lifting of that moisture back into central Alabama later today. That's going to mean more cloud cover and a very, very slight chance that we see some rainfall. All right, here's kind of our jet stream pattern over the next seven days. Uh, we're going to see some of the heaviest rain kind of stall out. Weak ridging over the southeast keeps the heaviest rain across the Midwest and across the Ohio Valley. You see those rainfall totals there between three and five inches for us between one and two. We'll talk more about that here for our lunchtime forecast. No rain in it, at least for the short term later on today. I'll let you know, could that be changing as we head closer to Friday? And your weekend forecast, a full look at your 10 day coming up here in just a couple minutes. New on GMA, your July 4th fireworks show might not be quite as impressive this year. With July 4th nearly here, local fireworks stores say that they are experiencing shortages due to shipping delays and the closure of Chinese factories. According to our partner, the Aniston Star, one fireworks store in Oxford says it's taking triple the amount of time to get those shipments in. Stores near the Georgia state line say that they are not able to get enough supply. Building for the future to keep your family safe. Next this morning, why the city of Trustville says one new fire station will help in many ways. The next steps to address growth in Northeast Jefferson County. You're watching the one and only Good Morning Alabama. Good Morning Alabama. Time right now is 446. Happening right now, it is a race against time for some local school districts to find enough teachers for the fall. This is especially true in smaller, more rural systems. Etowah County School says it recruits a lot of teachers coming out of Jacksonville State University's education program. However, the number of graduates is low. Bessemer City Schools is offering a sign-up bonus plus salary for new teachers to come and work in that district. So we know at a certain point that individuals um, hang their heads and they retire and we celebrate them. And so when you have those retirees, you have gaps in the classroom. Bessemer City Schools needs to hire at least nine teachers. Both Bessemer and Etowah Schools start fall classes August 12th. Jacksonville State University is opening its doors to students impacted by the closure of Judson College. JSU has come up with a way for those students to finish their degrees by offering merit-based transfer scholarships. Judson College will close its campus at the end of July in Marion. From your child's education to your family's safety, Trustville is working to build a new fire station to help accommodate growth in the northern part of the city near the Civic Center. A new station would allow every neighborhood to be within five miles of a new fire station. Chief Tim Schatz says it would improve response times. Right now, two different fire stations help respond to calls in the northern part of the city. From our current fire stations, uh, our response times um, are not as good as they are to some of the other parts of the city. So we're looking at ways to help that improve our response time and provide better services for the citizens that live and work in that part of the town. The city just began meeting with an architect. Mayor Buddy Choate says the next step is to find a funding source. He hopes to build the new station within two years. ABC 3340 News is working for you with new developments to a story we first brought you earlier this week about some growth concerns in one of Shelby County's fastest growing cities. The city engineer of Calera is now addressing concerns that some developers did not follow the rules when building new subdivisions. Chris Papa says reports about illegal subdivisions in the city are, quote, misleading. Calera is working with developers to require a traffic study for larger subdivisions to address recent complaints about heavy traffic. This day and age, especially with all that's been going on and we've been dealing with the pandemic and everything, all we want to do is be able to get to where we want to go and not have to have all these delays. The city engineer also says changes are coming to keep the fire and the police department in the loop about new subdivisions and how these extra homes will impact staffing needs. 
Here are this morning's COVID-19 vaccine headlines you need to know. First, a CDC panel is revealing a now likely association between two vaccines and some rare cases of heart inflammation. That CDC report found a likely association between the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines and a rare, mostly mild heart inflammation in younger people. Out of more than 26 million doses, 323 cases were found, mostly in young men. However, doctors say the benefits of getting a vaccine outweigh any risks. New this morning, the United States is sending 3 million doses of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine to Brazil. Brazil is seeing a surge in new cases, and less than a third of the country's population is vaccinated. The shipment comes after the U.S. sent 2.5 million doses to Taiwan this past weekend. It's a story that continues to make big headlines. New reaction to Britney Spears speaking for the first time about the conservatorship and the battle with her father over control of her own money. During a 30 minute virtual status hearing Wednesday, Spears told the court she's been exploited, saying, quote, I deserve a life. Spears also claimed that doctors have been giving her medication that she did not want to take. She's been under that conservatorship order since 2008. New this morning, Las Vegas takes a new gamble. A massive new resort opens just in time for the summer travel rush, and we have our first look inside. Resorts World Las Vegas is the first hotel casino to open on the Strip in more than a decade. Developed by a group from Malaysia, it is three hotels in one, costing more than $4 billion to build. Time right now is 450. Meteorologist Evan Chikvera is watching the forecast this morning. And Evan, looks like you found a picture of the moon. It took some doing, Sarah, but we did find a sky can that does a 360 and looks right into the setting super moon. This is known as the strawberry moon. And it, notice on the sky can doesn't do it justice. But if you go outside and you can get somewhere within the next about 10 to 15 minutes, you might be able to see this setting. It's going to look larger right now. Uh, it's it's at its closest in orbit to Earth. So here's how this works. It is June. It is the strawberry moon. A lot of times these get their nicknames from the time of year that was associated with a harvest or something that was widely expected or understood at this time of the year. It is going to be visible from now through Friday. Best going to be seen between midnight, midnight and 5 a.m. Now keep in mind it sets a little bit later each day, but once the sun comes up, it'll be tough to see with our sunrise time around 537. You might want to get out there a little bit earlier. It is also the final of 2021. For the rest of the year, we will no longer have the full moon coincide with the moon's closest in its elliptical orbit to Earth. This is something really cool. I've always been interested in astronomy, so if you just want a little fun fact, a little tidbit, there you go this morning. Now temperatures are slightly warmer than we were on Wednesday. Wednesday, looking at, for the most part, 60s and 70s, 158 showing up there. Haleyville's at 61, 72 in Tuscaloosa, Centerville, sitting at 70 degrees at this time. Let's walk you through the rest of your Thursday forecast. There are slight changes beginning later on today. What we're going to have is southeasterly winds, and what that's going to allow is kind of this moisture ascent from the Gulf of Mexico is going to come back over central Alabama. There will be a very slight chance of rain. I mentioned this yesterday in our eastern county. So Randolph, Claiborne, Tallapoosa, Coosa counties, maybe even Talladega County looking at the chance for a pop up shower later today. Won't be a lot of rain. There's not a ton of moisture availability in the mid levels, but we slowly start to see a little bit of that mugginess come back today. Highs will be in the middle to upper 80s overnight tonight. Partly cloudy skies will have the chance for a little bit of patchy fog at the start of the day on Friday. Otherwise, Friday afternoon, once again, partly cloudy, low rain chances and not a whole lot different in terms of temperatures. Highs will be in the middle to upper 80s. We might see a stray 90 degrees as you get further south, maybe southern Green County, southern Hale County on the very southern edge of the viewing area. Next weather maker really has kind of backed off a little bit. I showed that uh, rain threat over the next several days. A front does approach the Tennessee Valley region, but it's going to stay far enough north to not give us a huge impact of rain on Saturday. Sunday, perhaps a better threat of rainfall, especially in the late afternoon as we see showers and thunderstorms dip down from, say, the Huntsville area to just north of Birmingham. So look for that rain chance to really increase uh, in a bigger way by Sunday. And then as we head into next week, overall, those rain chances are slightly elevated elevated and overall our temperatures are actually going to be slightly below normal. We're usually right at about 90 and we'll have very little 90s here over the next 7 to 10 days.
the Mountain Dew Zero Sugar Sports Desk with Jeff Spiegel. UAB made a strong hire Wednesday to run its baseball program. Casey Dunn is one of the most respected coaches in the college game. Dunn won 530 games in 17 seasons at Sanford, led them to three NCAA tournament appearances. The chance to go to UAB and take the Blazers to the next level was a challenge he couldn't pass up. I think we did a great job at Sanford of making Sanford baseball Birmingham's team. And now I got to change that and I got to make UAB Birmingham's team. And, uh, and, you know, that's a goal that we, we've got a mighty task because of what we built on the other side of the hill. But, uh, but that's the goal. The goal is also to upgrade UAB's baseball facilities. Young Memorial Field is 37 years old. Athletic Director Mark Ingram said a new stadium is part of the long range vision the short term vision renovations to make young field not look so old. The surface of uh, the dugouts, the uh, the seating area for fans, concession stands, uh, restroom for fans. But I made it clear to Coach Dunn that I recognize there's a need there. And, you know, and I thought it was important that he hear from me that um, that I didn't just think it was perfectly suitable for what would get us to the level we want to be able to compete at. You know, you talk about a facility like that's the goal of the facility for me is one that we can host a regional in. Uh, people in this league have shown that you can do that. Uh, well, if, if we're going to get to that point, we've got to have the facility that can host one. Well, a miracle finish for Vandy keeps them in the College World Series. The door scored twice in the ninth to beat Stanford. That's how the winning run scored right there on a wild pitch by the Pac-12 Pitcher of the Year, Brandon Beck. Sheer exhilaration by the doors, sheer shock on the faces of Cardinal fans and players. Vandy wins 6-5. Stanford is eliminated. Legion FC on the road taking on Miami FC. Scoreless game in the 82nd minute. In the corner, Jaden Cervania gets past a couple of guys. Beautiful cross to Nico Brett, his seventh goal of the season. And that's a 1-0 win for the Eastern Conference Central leading Legion FC. Well, the Blazer football team had a pretty busy day in the shadow of their new home at Protective Stadium. They help build a home for someone else in their annual Habitat for Humanity team build. They had to cancel this event last season because of the virus, and it was team bonding that the players sorely missed. That is sports for this Thursday morning. Have a great day. Right now on GMA at 5, tensions are high in the Senate. Today is a make or break for President Biden's agenda, what the administration is pushing for. And 4th of July is right around the corner, but it might look a little different this year. Why fireworks might be hard to come by. And did you buy something for Prime Day? Well, you're definitely not the only one. Why this Prime Day they say was the biggest one yet. This is ABC 3340's Good Morning Alabama. Hey, good morning, Alabama. It is 5 o'clock. It's Thursday morning on this June 24th. We're so glad you're here starting this new day with us or Friday Eve. That sounds pretty good, right? We'll call it that. We want to start right now with a look at the forecast. Meteorologist Evan chick starts us off. And Evan, it's clear enough to see that beautiful moon out there this morning. That it is. And uh, we don't have a, a telescope to use here, so we're pretending to use our sky cam as a telescope. Got this zoomed in pretty good on the setting moon here in uh, over Tuscaloosa. This is coming from the courthouse. And even on this image right here, you can tell that there's a little bit of a tint coloring to it. Call it like maybe a slight orange or a slight pink. And that a lot of times comes with a super moon. It gets low in the atmosphere. And because of the thickness of the atmosphere, it'll actually give a certain tint or a color to that. So I think that's really cool. It's setting right now. We won't see it again until we're probably around midnight tonight, but it will be visible the next couple of nights, and it is the final supermoon of 2021. Here's a look at temperatures as it stands outside right now. We're a little bit warmer than yesterday. You can start to slowly feel that moisture creeping back into place. As expected here, we had that nice one day of dry air, but now back to the norm. And one thing I'm going to keep an eye out for the next about hour or so is the potential for developing fog, especially in rural lower lying areas where that cooler air tends to pool right now. Visibility is OK. Your next couple of hours here, we're going to be partly cloudy. Temperatures ranging from the upper 60s to the lower 70s. No rain is in store in the short term here through 8 o'clock. But could we see a shower later in the forecast today? I'll have the details on that coming up here in just about five minutes. Today is the big day for President Biden's agenda. Infrastructure and policing regulations are the two big topics of discussion. Britt Conway reports why the next 24 hours could be crucial.
deal making in D.C. with infrastructure and policing front and center. The divisions of the moment shouldn't stop us from doing the right thing for the future. But the division remains and the countdown is on. The Senate is getting ready to start a two week recess. With infrastructure, we're talking improvement to roads, bridges, water systems, technology, climate related measures, manufacturing, research and development and the caregiving economy and how to pay for it all. But senators on both sides of the aisle say there's an agreement on a bipartisan deal. And today at the White House, they're expected to talk about it with the president. But will it be enough? Depends on who you ask. My sense is that that deal right now has 20 votes, not 60 votes. Um, we're going to have to take a deep dive into the agreement. Last week, I heard from a lot of my colleagues saying, I just need to look at one other issue. You know, can you do this? Can you do that? But uh, there's, there's a lot of interest in having a bipartisan proposal. Same goes for police reform, but that hasn't been easy either. With debate over the standard for charging police officers with crimes and qualified immunity, so police officers can be sued in civil court. A lead senator on the negotiations says today may be a make or break day. All told, it could be a make or break day for Biden. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Back here at home happening today, Mayor Randall Woodfin and a community reinvestment group will host a groundbreaking for a housing project in Inslee. The new Oak Hill project is a $25 million development deal that will add 28 homes to the area. First closings are slated to take place later on this year. It's a lot more congestion than there was like three years ago, for sure, uh, especially with the newer subdivisions up and coming too. Gains continue in one, one fast growing Shelby County city. As Calera continues to grow, so is the traffic. The city's engineer says he is working toward requiring developers to do traffic impact studies before being allowed to build new subdivisions. It may be that the council comes back and wants to low, lower that number to maybe 50, but we're in the, we're kind of in that development uh, phase right now of of what will be an amendment to the zoning ordinance that will hopefully help with uh, with the traffic. The city engineer also says changes are coming to keep the fire and the police department in the loop about new subdivisions and how these extra homes will impact staffing needs. As Trussville also continues to grow, neighbors in the northern part of the city now want a new fire station to increase response times. If a new fire station is built, it would put all of the neighborhoods in Trussville within a five minute radius of the nearest fire station. Currently, crews from two other fire stations are covering those calls. The response time now depends, like you say, on traffic. Um, but um, I ideally, we would rather have something much closer to be able to provide a, a faster response time to those folks that live out there. Here, Buddy Choate says an architect is working on those plans. The city is also looking toward how to fund the project. However, the city council has already committed to finding a way to pay for it. We are on top of breaking news overnight. Part of a multi story condominium building collapses in South Florida. This is the scene right now in Surfside on Miami Beach. We have just learned at least eight people are hospitalized because of this. A young boy was seen being rescued from the rubble, and we actually just saw some fire crews on ladders trying to get to people who may still be inside that building. Crews still searching to try to find anybody who may be trapped. Right now, it is not clear what caused the collapse. I'll have updates here at the live desk as soon as I learn more. Time right now is 506. New this morning, how could it be the 4th of July without fireworks? Well, for a second year, many local fireworks stores are experiencing shortages for several reasons. ABC 3340's Stoney Sharp is working for you. Stoney, what are local employees saying? Good morning, Sarah. They expected their store to be stocked with more fireworks in 2021. Not really the case. What's the issue? State Line Fireworks in Heflin tells our news partner, the Aniston Star, where normally it could order 10 cases of fireworks, it could only order four cases this year. Why? Well, three reasons. Global shipping delays, container shortages, and the closure of those Chinese factories. In the same story, in South Alabama, Jerry's House of Thunder tells us the larger fireworks stores will be serviced, but the small stands won't get 20% of their inventory leading up to Independence Day. Live in the newsroom, Stony Sharp, ABC 3340 News.
All right, Stoney, thank you. And several events will be taking place this weekend. Free Friday Flicks kicks off at Veterans Memorial Park in Hoover. This week's movie is The Croods, A New Age. The park opens at 630 and the movie will start at dusk. And the city of Tuscaloosa is hosting live at the plaza tomorrow. Guest performing include Keith Kashmir Williams and Justin Oliver. The music starts at six o'clock. People are still feeling the aftermath of tropical system Claudette in Northport. More than 100 flood victims cannot return to their homes. Places like Northport Baptist Church are doing everything they can to try to help. However, that help is only temporary. People still need new homes. We lost all of our belongings inside the home, simply all of it. And what we were doing earlier is taking everything out to throw it in the trash. The majority of the people affected by the flooding are Spanish speaking. And as of this morning, the American Red Cross is still looking for Spanish speaking volunteers. Saturday, a volunteer cleanup effort is happening for the Willowbrook Mobile Home Community in Northport. That event will be from 8 a.m. until noon. A number of churches and nonprofit organizations are expected to be there to help out. Friday is the deadline to register for FEMA disaster assistance. This is for homeowners or renters who have uninsured damage from the severe storms and tornadoes back in March. This deadline also applies to small business owners looking to register for low interest disaster loans. We have links on how to apply right now on ABC3340.com. Happening tomorrow, a mobile food distribution drive will take place in Ohatchee in Calhoun County for those who were affected by the March 15th tornado. The drive will start at 10 a.m. at Oak Bowery Baptist Church. The food distribution is on a first come, first served basis. Time right now is 5.09. Thankfully, no storms to talk about today. Meteorologist Evan Chikvera is here. Evan, we've been enjoying this low humidity for June. It's been very nice, but it's fleeting. It always is this time of year. We don't get it for very long. Hopefully, you enjoyed it yesterday. Even like leaving here at uh, around 12.30, 1 o'clock, it was still relatively comfortable. It wasn't that you walk outside and you feel like the weight of the atmosphere pressing down on you. You're immediately uh, kind of sweaty. Now, today we start to see that transition back to a little bit more of a muggy setup. You're already seeing that a little bit with our temperatures on the rise from yesterday. We were 59 in Sylacauga, now we're 67. We were 61 in Birmingham, now 71. And we're gradually going to see these temperatures get trending back towards what would be quote unquote normal in the lower 70s for this time of year. Some of that coolest air holding on in northeast Alabama here early on this morning. Let's walk you through your Thursday forecast. Let's begin this at 7 a.m. This is high time for a lot of people heading out the door, whether it be to work, maybe you're headed to breakfast. Let's take a look, maybe even just walking the dog out there. Partly cloudy skies. I mentioned the potential for fog early on. Anytime you see a transition from a dry air mass to a little bit more of a muggy, when you have the threat to see that patchy fog, we may see that a little bit this morning. All right, let's get to about 12 o'clock today. So right around lunchtime, we talked about this a little bit yesterday. Just want to reiterate our, our rain threat today is not very high, but if we do see any pop up showers, look for a little bit closer to the state line in eastern Alabama. That's probably going to be our best bet. The highest mid level moisture content is going to be on that side of the state. Might see a passing shower. Very brief though. The rain threat is not very high today. We get into the middle of the afternoon. Our high temperatures wind up somewhere 86, 87, 88 degrees in that range, which is pretty normal for this time of year, maybe slightly below average. Get into later on this afternoon. Again, the chance for maybe a pop up shower, maybe a rumble of thunder up near Gadsden, but the majority of the state is staying dry through the day today. We'll do a range of about 86 to 89. We'll be partly cloudy today with the slight chance of a shower. As I just mentioned overnight tonight, we are looking at temperatures 67 to about 72. Moisture does slowly return and we're not quite as cool. So coming up here, my full weather and just uh, on the other side of this break here, full strawberry moon. We'll talk about how you can see that, where you can see it, the significance of it, how we're dry through Saturday, mainly outside of a stray shower. We'll talk about those temperature trends and a look at the tropics. All coming up here in just a couple minutes. The race to vaccinate America. Next at five, the new report on a rare illness possibly connected to two of the most popular vaccines available. Why doctors say your best bet is still to get that vaccine. Time right now is 5:11. You're taking a live look at traffic moving. This is I-65 there at Third Avenue South, right in downtown Birmingham.
Things are moving great. I just did a quick scan of the maps. We have no accidents to report this Thursday. Stay with us. Good morning, Alabama. We'll be right back. You're watching the one and only Good Morning Alabama. Good morning, Alabama. Welcome back. It is 514. A CDC panel is revealing a likely association between the vaccine and heart inflammation. Still, experts say it's better. It's a bigger risk to not get the vaccine at all. ABC's Ike Jachi has the latest. This morning, 34 year old Colina Anderson of Springfield, Missouri, with a warning about the coronavirus. This is not a fun disease. It's 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 not something to take lightly. She's been battling COVID for the past 10 days inside one of the many Missouri hospitals currently surging with new COVID patients. Uh, the people who still think it's like the flu, it's not. Oh boy, is it not. The more contagious Delta variant is now in at least 48 states, making up nearly half of all infections across parts of the West and Midwest. This morning, a cluster of 17 new cases of the Delta variant found in a Nevada town. The cases are people all under 60 and unvaccinated. We've been seeing much younger patients needing management within the hospital, um, some as young as their late teens, in their 20s, and their 30s, and unfortunately, all of those unvaccinated and very sick. 34% of adults ages 18 to 24 have been vaccinated, the same group that's currently exhibiting one of the highest rates of infection. And now, a new report from a CDC panel finding a likely association between the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines and a rare, mostly mild heart inflammation in younger people. Out of more than 26 million doses given to young people, the CDC confirming 323 cases of the condition after getting a vaccine, mostly in males. Still, experts say the benefits of getting the shot far outweigh the risks. Getting COVID is far more risky than having the vaccine because the heart failure that we see long term from COVID infection can be more, more, more severe. A CDC working group found there isn't enough evidence yet to recommend booster shots right now, but that could change as more data emerges. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. Alabama continues to stay below 200 hospitalizations of COVID-19 patients. In fact, right now there are 193. However, that number is creeping up. Monday, there were just 169 patients statewide. Right now, more than 45% of the U.S. population is fully vaccinated against COVID-19. By comparison, just 10% of the world's population is fully vaccinated. The Biden administration plans to share 80 million doses by the end of June. COVID-19 deaths may have hit an all-time low last month. However, new numbers show the virus is hitting some communities harder than others. New data shows African Americans and younger people are dying at higher rates, according to data from Johns Hopkins University. Deaths among black Americans accounted for nearly 19% of COVID-19 deaths in May. In the same month, the percent of Asian and Hispanic Americans who died from the virus decreased. Nearly 300 people are still dying of the virus every day here in the U.S. If you're looking to help your local community or someone in need, ABC 3340 and our parent company, Sinclair Broadcast Group, are partnering with the American Red Cross. Set up an appointment to donate a unit of blood by logging on to abc3340.com forward slash cares. And if you would like to test your COVID-19 antibodies, you'll get those results from your donation in about two weeks. It's 518. We want to send it back over to meteorologist Evan chick Vera for another check of this Thursday morning forecast. And it's a beautiful start already. It is, Sarah. We're switching up the view a little bit. We were looking at the moon setting before. Now we're turning our attention to the sunrise, which is coming up here. Official sunrise time for Birmingham is 538, give or take about two to three minutes, depending on where you are in Alabama. But a nice view here across the Grandview Medical Center. Looking uh, 280 would be right below us, and you're looking off pretty much due east. And what we're going to see with, with sky staying partially cloudy or mostly clear, you'll have a chance to see the super moon if you haven't seen it. And it'll be visible from now. I guess it's, it's set now, but as far as like tonight, and uh, through uh, Friday morning, we'll see, be able to see that midnight to 5 a.m. That's going to be your best time to see that because that's it's going to have come up be high enough in the atmosphere for you to see it. And it is the final one in 2021. Once again, later on this year, we won't actually see the moon 
and the the full moon and its closest orbit align with us. So just something cool if you want to see here later on tonight. Temperatures out there right now are in the upper 60s to right near 70 degrees, a good bit warmer than what we were here yesterday. It's also a little bit more muggy. You may notice that as we go through the day today and over the next several days, that Gulf moisture will slowly begin to reintrude into northern Alabama. A look at your hour by hour forecast for the day today. A pretty big jump in temperatures from say 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. We go from the upper 60s to the 80s and then for our lunchtime temperatures, lower 80s will top out in the middle to upper 80s later on today with primarily partly cloudy skies and the slight chance of a pop up shower. So let's talk about that here moving through your future view here today. I mentioned this earlier, the slight chance of an isolated shower in the eastern half of the state, maybe the northeastern half of the state. Most of us stay dry and if you get the rain, it won't last for very long or be a, a huge impact to your day. There's just not a lot of moisture in the mid levels uh, to fall precipitously as rainfall. I don't look at that as a big factor in the forecast today will be but largely partly cloudy. All right, overnight tonight, partly cloudy skies. Temperatures initially are in the mid 70s. We'll fall to the lower 70s, a few 60s out there to start the day on Friday. And then as we go through Friday afternoon, very similar to today, a slight chance of a shower. I've got the percentages on the 10 day at 10%. It's not an overwhelming threat. And again, I think most of us stay dry through Friday and even into Saturday afternoon. So that's where we start with our next weather maker, and it's not even really a system that makes it here. It's a system that's going to be on the kind of the precipice of moving into the southeast, and we'll see a few showers moving south into the Midwest Ohio Valley, and that's going to increase the moisture content in the southeast. And as this front gets slightly closer by Sunday afternoon, we could be looking at more widespread rainfall, but again, a low impact and not a big system, and we're simply looking at the increase in those scattered showers and a few thunderstorms with muggy conditions returning. The tropics, pretty benign, very quiet as of now. No impact, at least for us locally, over the next 10 day forecast. And our temperatures will be very much close to normal for this time of year, with highs between 86 and 90, morning lows right around 70. That's check your forecast. Don't go anywhere. A lot more coming your way from GMA. Welcome back. Time right now is 523. A consumer alert if you have Verizon for your internet or cell phone service. Dozens of outages have been reported here in the Birmingham area, along with Atlanta and some parts of Florida, too. According to Verizon, the outage could go until 630 this morning. Drivers along I-20 will soon have more charging stations for electric vehicles as early as July 4th. A new station is being installed in downtown Oxford by Highway 21. It'll be the fourth charging station in the area. Others are expected to be installed in Jefferson, Tuscaloosa and Coleman counties. This year's Prime Day saw record shattering sales. The two day event saw the biggest numbers for third party sellers in Amazon's history. In fact, Amazon says third party sellers sold more than Amazon itself. Worldwide, Prime members bought more than 250 million items. The best selling items, robotic vacuums and coffee makers and give customers what they want. Some people are a little disappointed with Apple because they want to see a new name for the iPhone 13. One top name getting lots of attention online, iPhone 2021. Krispy Kreme is going public. The company has been private since 2016. By going public, the company is looking for a nearly $4 billion, $4 billion valuation. That would help pay off debt. Krispy Kreme is offering roughly 26.7 million shares of stock at 21 to 24 dollars per share. An Alabama man has spent more than 200 days in the hospital. New on GMA at 530, we are hearing from his wife and about the financial toll. This is all taking on their family too. And in the next 10 minutes, tensions remain high in the Senate as President Biden's agenda is up for discussion. Why he says this should not stop America's future. That's next. In today's Tech Bytes, Amazon's Prime Day results. The company says more than 250 million items were sold Monday and Tuesday. Amazon's Fire TV stick was the most popular item, but small businesses also thrived. Amazon says consumers bought nearly $2 billion in products from them. iPhone users are now able to share tweets directly to Instagram stories without having to take a screenshot. Twitter's newly enabled feature is simple. Users can tap on any tweet, then hit share, then tap on Instagram stories. And Netflix is releasing a dating show called Sexy Beasts. Contestants will be disguised in full Hollywood makeup prosthetics, 
hoping to find love based on personality, not looks. A featured single will choose one of three potential matches, but they'll only see that person's face after making their pick. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Good morning, Alabama. Time to get up and get going. You're waking up with a team that's working for you. Good morning, friends. It is coming up on 5.30 on this Thursday morning. We're so glad you're here kicking off this new day with us. And we start right now with a look at the forecast. You can plan it all out. Meteorologist Evan Chikvera is here. And Evan, it feels pretty good out there this morning, but it's a little bit warmer than yesterday. It is slightly warmer. And you can tell you walk outside and it's still, it's not that unbearable. You know, in July, sometimes you feel like you're wearing the air. Oh, yeah. You walk outside, it's just like, oh, we got to do this again. <laughs> not quite to that level, but it's not as nice as what it was yesterday morning. We still have some great images this morning. We've kind of jumped around our sky cams here over the last hour from seeing the setting full moon to now uh, looking forward to the sunrise. And this is up in Coleman County near the downtown Coleman area. And you can clearly see that there's more clear skies than cloud cover out there. And that should bode well for the forecast later on today as we're looking at a partly cloudy to mostly scenario moving forward. But to go and reiterate those temperatures, yesterday we were looking at morning lows in the, in the middle 50s. Today we're back to where it's a little closer to where it should be this time of year. 70 in Alabaster, 71 here in Birmingham, 64 in Pell City, still a little bit cooler as you head down I-20, 61 in Haleyville and Aniana showing 58. I wouldn't gamble that there's a whole lot of other locations there in Blount County though that are in the 50s. A lot of times when we see an increase in moisture, that'll lead to a little bit of patchy fog. I haven't seen much of that this morning, just letting you know I'm keeping an eye on that. And over the next couple of hours here, we should be looking at overall partly cloudy to mostly sunny skies. Those temperatures go from upper 60s to the lower 70s here. And there's no rain in the short-term forecast, but could we see any showers pop back into play later on today or for your Friday? We'll have more on that coming up here in just a couple minutes. We are on top of breaking news. At least one person is dead in this condo collapse in South Florida. We're taking a live look right now, a live look at this scene. This is a first daylight look at that damage. Those rescue crews still going inside to make sure people are not trapped. As of right now, we know eight people, at least eight people had to be taken to the hospital. There's no word yet on total injuries here, but you can see just some of the rubble that side of the building collapsed. This is in Surfside, Florida, right on Miami Beach. In that area, several agencies on the scene now. You see they have canine units as well, trying to find people who may still be stuck in this condo building. Earlier, we saw crews, fire crews with ladders going up to balconies, trying to rescue people as well. And just look at that damage this morning. This daylight view showing you a better look at this. Part of this building just completely collapsed on the ground. It's not clear yet what caused this. We are getting some new information about this building. It has 12 stories with more than 100 units. It was built in 1981. Again, no word yet on exactly what caused this. We'll continue to find out details. Our sister station on the scene right now sending us that information. So as soon as we get an update here at the live desk, I'll continue to bring you that information. Really frightening images there, Catherine. Thank you. Back here at home developing overnight, a Birmingham man is in the hospital after he was shot several times at an apartment complex. Investigators say the shooting happened at the Onyx apartment complex on Erlang Circle in northeast Birmingham Wednesday night. At this hour, police officers are still searching for a shooter. In state education news, local school districts are rushing to try to hire enough teachers before we get to the new fall semester. Recruiting is even harder for smaller districts during the current teacher shortage. ABC 3340's Stoney Sharp joins us right now. And Stoney, this has turned into a competition. It has a recruiting battle, Sarah. Almost all school districts are looking, looking to hire more teachers across the state, including Bessemer City Schools. Dr. Autumn Jeter there, the superintendent, and she says the district is having to get creative, offering an extra signing bonus in certain areas of study like math, reading, science and special education. One reason for so many open positions statewide, teachers choosing to retire after a tough 2020. And we know at a certain point that individuals um, hang their heads and they retire and we celebrate them. And so when you have those retirees, you have gaps in the classroom. At 6.30 a.m. Etowah County, how that district is relying on college graduates to fill the open spots. Live in the studio, Stony Sharp, ABC 
33, 40 years. And Birmingham City Schools will host a teacher recruitment fair this Saturday. The event begins at 9 a.m. at the Birmingham Public Library. The Birmingham School District needs to fill 120 positions. Candidates may be offered a letter of intent at the recruitment fair. Modified COVID-19 restrictions are on the way to the University of Alabama's summer commencement ceremonies next month. Now, fully vaccinated people are not required to wear a mask. The university is also lifting the limit on how many guests each graduate can have. More than 1,000 students are expected to receive their diplomas July 31st at Coleman Coliseum. Jacksonville State University is opening its doors to students impacted by the closure of Judson College in West Alabama. JSU has figured out a way for those students to finish their degrees by offering merit-based transfer scholarships. Judson College will close its campus at the end of July in Marion. Speaking of college, what about life after school? The federal government is working to make it easier for student loan borrowers to secure a mortgage. A new policy from the Fair Housing Administration will change how student loans are calculated to allow for smaller monthly payments. The total student loan debt has swelled to $1.7 trillion nationwide. Many just don't even apply because they've heard from, from someone else that that student loan debt is going to hinder you. Again, we're very optimistic that these changes that just were put into place will certainly help to rectify that. June is actually National Home Ownership Month. In Birmingham, Cadence Bank will hold a home ownership workshop this Saturday to answer some questions about navigating the home buying process. You can find information about how to register on our website. Tomorrow, former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin is set to be sentenced for the death of George Floyd. He will be sentenced for the most serious charge of second degree murder. The statutory maximum penalty for second degree murder in Minnesota is 40 years. Legal observers do not believe Chauvin will receive the maximum. Today is the big day for President Biden's agenda. Infrastructure and policing regulations are two of the big topics of discussion. Britt Conway reports why the next 24 hours could be crucial. Deal making in D.C. with infrastructure and policing front and center. The divisions of the moment shouldn't stop us from doing the right thing for the future. But the division remains and the countdown is on. The Senate is getting ready to start a two week recess. With infrastructure, we're talking improvement to roads, bridges, water systems, technology, climate related measures, manufacturing, research and development and the caregiving economy and how to pay for it all. But senators on both sides of the aisle say there's an agreement on a bipartisan deal. And today at the White House, they're expected to talk about it with the president. But will it be enough? Depends on who you ask. My sense is that that deal right now has 20 votes, not 60 votes. Um, we're going to have to take a deep dive into the agreement. Last week, I heard from a lot of my colleagues saying, I just need to look at one other issue. You know, can you do this? Can you do that? But uh, there's, there's a lot of interest in having a bipartisan proposal. Same goes for police reform, but that hasn't been easy either. With debate over the standard for charging police officers with crimes and qualified immunity, so police officers can be sued in civil court. A lead senator on the negotiations says today may be a make or break day. All told, it could be a make or break day for Biden. I'm Britt Conway reporting. To help push more Americans to get vaccinated, President Biden will be in Raleigh, North Carolina today. He'll be visiting a mobile vaccination site before kicking off a community canvassing event. The White House acknowledged that it would not hit his goal. Currently, about 45% of the population is vaccinated in North Carolina. Tomorrow, Vice President Kamala Harris will be visiting the U.S.-Mexico border. This will be her first trip since being asked to handle the surge at the border. She's facing criticism from both sides of the aisle for not visiting the border to see the problems firsthand sooner. She'll also be making a stop in El Paso, Texas, where people are hoping that she can bring some change. You know, she needs to close the detention center for children in Fort Bliss. The second thing is that I would hope that she would announce to stop Title 42. 
The White House hasn't revealed the details of the trip or if she will be visiting the Fort Bliss Army Post where nearly 1600 migrant children are being held. She'll be joined by Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. Time right now is 539. Meteorologist Evan Chikavera is watching your morning forecast for you as you head out this morning. It's a little bit warmer out there today, Evan. It is a little bit warmer out there this morning. It's also going to slowly turn a little bit more muggy. So I want to start with this. This is our water vapor imagery, and essentially what this does, it looks at the mid-levels of the atmosphere, and it finds where do we have the moisture versus the lack of it. The lack of the moisture you see with these more sandy colors. We're starting to see the intrusion of a little bit more water vapor coming in from the north today. That will give us a slight increase in cloud cover. The other thing I wanted to show is our surface dew points. Now you don't necessarily need to know what these numbers mean, but here's your scale. The closer you see to these kind of neutral colors, these grays, these whites, even these oranges, that's your drier air. We're a little closer to saturated when you see more of these greens and these are starting to come back. This is going to make it feel a little bit more muggy as we go through the day today and that'll kind of be a trend over the next couple of afternoons. Right now, as far as temperatures go, Pell City, you're at 64. We're sitting right at 71 here in Birmingham, 70 just to the south in Alabaster. Hey, you head on up I-22 to Marion Winston County. Looks like we have lower 60s up there. That's pretty much it as far as the cooler temperatures as that warmer air starting to become a little more intrusive. Let's walk you through your forecast today. I mentioned the potential very low threat of some rainfall. Let's move ahead to noon. Over the next couple of hours, the biggest thing is going to be our increase in temperature, where we'll go from now in the lower 70s to the lower 80s. And once we get into the early afternoon, as I mentioned, that slight increase in moisture, maybe a pop-up shower or two in the eastern half of the state. Overall, there's not going to be enough moisture aloft to give us widespread rain chances. Better chance you stay completely dry today than see any rainfall, but that slight threat will loom as we go through the afternoon evening hours. Our high temperatures topping out in the middle to upper 80s, about 86 to 89 degrees for a high today. And then this evening staying partly cloudy as those temperatures cool back down into the 70s and 80s. Very slight chance of a shower, partly cloudy today. There's your range in temperature. Shouldn't see any 90s on the map overnight tonight. Upper 60s to lower 70s with partly cloudy skies. And here's what we're watching for my full forecast in a few minutes. Where you can see and how you can see the strawberry full supermoon. Mainly dry through Saturday. We'll talk about those rain chances returning. A look at those high temperature trends and an update on your tropical forecast. All that coming up here in just about seven minutes. Good morning, Alabama. We'll be right back. You're watching the one and only Good Morning Alabama. Good morning, Alabama. Welcome back. It is 544. Experts are now trying to figure out if heart inflammation and the vaccines are linked. However, data shows the positives of the vaccine far outweighs the negative. Medical reporter Liz Bonus has the information you need to know. The majority of these heart inflammation cases of concern were in young people ages 16 to 24 after the second dose of the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine. But a summary of the data presented still said the benefits of the vaccine, even in this age group, outweigh the risk. But they also stated... It's still relatively early and um, you know we're still um, collecting information. The panel said there were nearly 800 reported cases of heart problems to the vaccine safety monitor system as of last month. Not all were the two likely linked to the vaccine known as myocarditis which is an inflammation of the heart and pericarditis which is an inflammation of the membrane surrounding the heart. People may get things like uh, chest pain, uh, difficulty breathing when they take a deep breath. Um, those are the main uh, symptoms of it. Dr. Stephen Blatt told me it's treated with anti-inflammatories or steroids and generally. Most of the people get over it just like you do any uh, of the side effects that are known to be associated with the mRNA vaccines. But the panel today said long-term follow-up is needed to know that for sure. So I think we're, we're early right now in this analysis and we need to continue monitoring and to accumulate more data. The other thing that was interesting and discussed at this meeting is that the heart inflammation is very different and not the dangerous inflammatory condition seen in children who do get the virus known as MISC. This syndrome is remarkable and have never seen it before. As with other vaccine side effects, it's likely now that from this meeting there will be recommendations to watch for heart inflammation symptoms, who's most at risk for them, 
and to weigh your individual benefit versus risk with your own health care provider. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus reporting. An Alabama man spent the past 209 days in the hospital battling COVID-19 complications. 51-year-old Tim Malden tested positive for the virus all the way back on Thanksgiving Day after complaining of breathing issues. Right now, his wife says a breathing machine is keeping him alive. He is such a fighter and he said, I, I'm just not, I'm not ready and I'm going to keep, keep doing and keep going and doing as much as I can uh, for as long as I can. And, and that's what he's done. His medical bills now total more than $2 million. Friends and family have helped cover hotel and travel expenses. If you would like to help out, you can go to abc3340.com for more information. Today, a massive new resort opens on the Las Vegas Strip just in time for that summer travel rush. ABC's Andrea Fujii takes us inside. This morning, a new addition to the Las Vegas Strip, hoping to cash in on the post-pandemic travel surge. Resorts World Las Vegas opens tonight, the first hotel casino to open on the Strip in more than a decade. They're going to bring a nice influx of people, brand new pools, brand new nightclubs. I think there's 40 restaurants in there. Developed by a group from Malaysia, it's three hotels in one, costing more than $4 billion to build. Sitting on the site formerly home to the Stardust Hotel, it features more than 3,500 rooms operated by Hilton and a 5,000-seat concert venue with big names already booked, including Katy Perry, Luke Bryan, Celine Dion, and Carrie Underwood. In addition to the 40 restaurants and bars, there are seven unique pools, including an infinity pool with views of the Strip and a 27,000 square foot spa. Lighting it all up, the largest in the world LED display covering 100,000 square feet. Sin City shut down early in the pandemic, but now with most COVID rules lifted, tourists are flocking back. I think it's gonna be pretty crazy coming up. It's gonna be a lot of traffic. A recent study found nearly a quarter of all Americans now rank Las Vegas at the top of their vacation destination list. Vegas is hoping for big business this 4th of July. Miley Cyrus is set to perform at Resorts World, and the concert will be shown on the casino's LED screen for the entire strip to see. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. Hard to believe it's already almost July 4th. Anybody else thinking that this year is flying on by? I guess that can be a good thing as we get back to normal. Here is a view and a gorgeous one at that of that sun just now over the horizon. This is our view from Clanton down in Chilton County. Thought that was a good way to start off this weather. Let's segue now. Speaking of more visibility, let's talk about this full moon, this strawberry. It's a super moon and essentially super moon just fancy for the moon's going to look bigger. In its orbit, the moon's orbit around Earth is elliptical, so at times it's closer, at times it's further. This is a lineup where it's a full moon and it's closest. It will have a pink or orange tint or hue to it. Best time to see it's going to be tonight from five, from midnight to about 5 a.m., so right before we come to you in the morning. And then that it is also the final one of 2021, so kind of cool there if you get a chance to see it. Yesterday, we came to you talking about how nice and cool it was. Today, not quite the same deal. It's a little bit warmer out there. Temperatures in the 60s to lower 70s and in addition to that we are going to look at an overall increase in kind of that humidity level here as we move forward today though the forecast looks pretty nice partly cloudy skies over the next several hours look for those temperatures to easily eclipse 80 degrees by right around lunchtime and we'll top out somewhere about 86 to 87 for a high temperature later on today very slight chance of a shower but overall we're looking dry today Let's move ahead to your future view. And as we look at your overall impacts for the day today, we may see an isolated shower in the eastern half of the state. Otherwise, partly cloudy skies with those temperatures once again in the middle 80s. Heat index factor shouldn't be too bad. And as we get into the evening and overnight hours, as far as your visibility for seeing the moon tonight or anything else, a partly cloudy sky, just some passing intervals of cloud cover. Otherwise, not too bad. By the start of the day on Friday, we are looking at, once again, partly cloudy skies with high temperatures ranging in the middle to upper 80s. A very slight chance of rain again on Friday afternoon, but today, tomorrow, low rain chances on the order of about 10 to 15 percent. Next weather maker, potential weather maker, is going to come from the middle of the country. I want to pause this here for a second. 
Notice our surface winds coming straight in from the Gulf. So this transition into a much more moisture rich environment is going to increase those rain chances Sunday afternoon into Monday. We also will have a front that's descending through the middle of the country and that's just going to give us a slightly higher rain chances. Also going to mean we're a little bit more muggy on a day to day basis. That mugginess can lead to higher heat index factors and a few more thunderstorms. We have to go all the way to the eastern Atlantic. This is right off the African coast. Big tropical wave here moving into the Atlantic. This is what we'll be watching over the next several days. In the short term, its potential development is only about a 20%, but as it gets out into these open waters, we'll watch for a slightly better chance of development, and we're still watching that area near the eastern Caribbean. As we look at our 10 day forecast, no tropical impacts, at least over the next seven to 10 days, but we do see slightly higher rain chances heading into next week. That's a check of your weather. Don't go anywhere. Good morning, Alabama. We'll be right back. Who's this? Uh, daddy. Your daddy? Daddy. Daddy. <laughs> Are you seeing double? That is the Royal Doppelganger who is captivating TikTok. More than 7 million people viewed the video of that man's daughter saying he looks just like Prince Harry. So this is Kevin Gannis. He's a teacher and a soccer coach in Arkansas. Gannis says he just laughs at people who thinks he looks who think he looks like a royal. He calls himself the Walmart version of Prince Harry. Here's what's really funny though. Gannis and the Duke of Sussex do share something in common. Both of their father's names are Charles. Some people thought it was Meghan Markle's like account, like that she had started an account. I read so many comments that said like, I thought this was, a, was Meghan's account. So when asked if Gannis would ever sign on as a Prince Harry impersonator, he says he can't because his Arkansas accent gets in the way of a proper British accent. You can see the resemblance there, though. Sir Elton John is hitting the road one last time. He's resuming his farewell tour next year after having to delay it because of the pandemic. The farewell Yellow Brick Road tour will resume in Europe in September, then head to North America in January. One stop will be in DC. It'll continue all year with dates as far ahead as 2023 in New Zealand. And call it a stampede right through a busy Los Angeles neighborhood. About 40 cows somehow escaped from a meat packing plant and the cows damaged cars. They broke car mirrors. There they go, just kind of running around. Some of them got pretty mad too. Local ranchers were eventually able to get the herd back to the plant. This is one pretty happy gorilla in Atlanta. The oldest living male gorilla in the world just added another candle to his birthday cake. Ozzy is turning 60 years old. And that's an accomplishment since gorillas are considered old after turning 40. And of course, Ozzy got a big birthday cake to help him celebrate. Happy birthday to Ozzy. Next on Gia Big at 6, America's birthday party could be a little dimmer this year. The new impacts local fireworks stores are having when it comes to preparing for the July 4th holiday. What you can notice if you still need to buy some fireworks. Fourth of July is right around the corner. Right now on GMA at 6, why it might look a little different this year. The local impacts of a firework shortage. This is ABC 3340's Good Morning Alabama. Good morning, Alabama. It is 6 o'clock on this Thursday morning, June 24th. We're so glad you're here starting this new day with us. We are all here helping you get ready for the day ahead. And we start right now with a look at the weather so you can plan it all out. Meteorologist Evan Chikvera starts us off. And Evan, it's a beautiful sunrise. A beautiful sunrise here, and this is much more typical, you would say, of a gym more of the June morning, I should say, than what we had yesterday morning. Here's the sun now, just actually coming over right before uh, we came back from break. There was actually a perfect like silhouette. The sun was just behind the clouds, looked really cool, but now shining atop those clouds here this morning. Your temperature showing up there to your Children's of Alabama at 72 degrees here this morning. Temperatures elsewhere are much warmer than we were yesterday. Still nothing that's super oppressive at this time, but nowhere in comparison to yesterday. We're sitting at uh, 69 degrees in Tuscaloosa, Utah is at 71, 70 in Alabaster, down in Clanton, 69. So what we've seen here over the last half hour is actually a decrease in temperature by about two to three degrees, almost statewide. And that has posed a little bit of visibility concern. Still looking okay. If you're down near Demopolis, Tom Bigby, you might be getting a little bit of a radiation fog there. 
up in Walker County as well. Overall, I think visibility is going to stay okay. And our lunchtime forecast for today, looking at temperatures eventually in the middle 80s. We are looking warm, primarily dry today. Will the dry conditions continue as we head closer to the weekend? Your full forecast just minutes away. It's going to check on traffic right now, taking a live look at the roads. I-65 at Valleydale. Things are looking great in the Birmingham Metro. If you're headed into downtown Birmingham from any direction, we don't have any slowdowns there. However, we've got a problem in Tuscaloosa. There's a crash reported at Lurleen Wallace Boulevard and 11th Street, and we are seeing backups already this morning to 15th. So if you were traveling that direction this morning, allow a little extra time for your commute. You can get around this, but it is going to slow you down. We are on top of that breaking news this morning. Part of a condo collapses in South Florida, killing at least one person. We have two different live views. We'll take this one over here on REM2 just to show you the side of this building. Looks like it has been completely sheared off here. That is the scope of this disaster right here. All of us this morning asking the question, how could this happen? And that is the question that investigators are looking to answer as well. Right now, they're still in search and rescue mode. We just saw some crews walk out with what looked like search dogs. We saw them go in about 30 minutes ago. We just saw them go out moments ago. You can see several crews on the scene there and that caution tape up. That was the mission early this morning to get as many people out as they could. We do know again at least one person has been killed and eight people were taken to a hospital. We do not have a total number of how many people have been hurt in this disaster. That is something we are still working to learn. And yeah, over here on this other live view showing you the cars damaged in this disaster as well. And again, just the scope of this. This is in Surfside, Florida right near Miami Beach, a very popular area for tourists, a lot of condos there. We'll continue to get updates from news crews on the scene and bringing the latest details here at the live desk. Happening today back here at home, Mayor Randall Woodfin and a community reinvestment group will host a groundbreaking for a housing project in Ensley. The new Oak Hill project is a $25 million development deal that will add 28 homes to the area. First closings are slated to take place later on this year. It's a lot more congestion than there was like three years ago, for sure, uh, especially with the newer subdivisions up and coming too. Growing pains continue in one fast growing Shelby County city. As Calera continues to grow, so is the traffic. The city's engineer says he is working toward requiring developers to have to do traffic impact studies before being allowed to build a new subdivision. It may be that the council comes back and wants to low, lower that number to maybe 50, but we're in the we're kind of in that development uh, phase right now of of what will be an amendment to the zoning ordinance that will hopefully help with uh, with the traffic. The city engineer also says changes are coming to keep the fire and police department in the loop about new subdivisions and how these extra homes will impact staffing needs. As Trustville continues to grow, neighbors in the northern part of that city now want a new fire station to increase response times. If a new fire station is built, it would put all the neighborhoods in Trustville within a five minute radius of the nearest fire station. Currently, crews from two other fire stations are covering the calls. The response time now depends, like you say, on traffic. Um, but um, I ideally, we would rather have something much closer to be able to provide a, a faster response time to those folks that live out there. Mayor Buddy Choate says an architect is working on those plans. The city is also looking toward how to fund the project. However, the city council has already committed to finding a way to pay for it. Time is 6.05. New this morning, how could it be the 4th of July without fireworks? For a second year, many local fireworks stores are experiencing shortages for several reasons. ABC 30 through 40, Stoney Sharp is working for you. Stoney, what are these local employees saying about all this? They expected their store to be fully stocked with more fireworks, Sarah. What's the issue here? Well, State Line Fireworks in Cleburne County tells our news partner, the Aniston Star, where normally it could order 10 cases of fireworks, it could only order four cases this year. Why? Well, three reasons, global shipping delays, container shortages, and the closure of Chinese factories. Now, the same story in South Alabama, Jerry's House of Thunder in Mobile County tells us 
Larger fireworks stores will be stocked, but the smaller stands will not get 20% of their inventory leading up to Independence Day. Live in the newsroom, Stony Sharp, ABC 3340 News. Several events will be taking place this weekend. Free Friday Flicks kicks off at Veterans Memorial Park in Hoover. This week's movie is The Crudes, A New Age. The park opens at 630 and the movie starts at dusk. People are still feeling the aftermath of Tropical System Claudette. In Northport, more than 100 flood victims cannot return home. And places like Northport Baptist Church are doing everything they can to help. However, the help is only temporary. People still need new homes. Saturday, a volunteer cleanup effort is happening for the Willowbrook Mobile Home Community in Northport. The event will be from 8 a.m. until noon. A number of churches and nonprofit organizations are all expected to be there to help out. Friday is the deadline to register for FEMA disaster assistance. This is for homeowners or renters who have uninsured damage from the severe storms and the tornadoes our state saw back in March. The deadline also applies to small business owners looking to register for low interest disaster loans. We have links on how to apply right now on ABC3340.com. Time is 6.07. Thankfully, no storms to talk about today. Meteorologist Evan Chick Vera is here. And Evan, we're talking about the humidity and the heat coming back in here. Yep, slowly going to be coming back. And we're going to get back to reality as far as what we'd expect here at the end of June, beginning of July. Still have some dry air in place aloft. And that should keep our skies to at least a partly cloudy to mostly sunny today. We will start to see a little bit more cloud cover over the next couple of days. Something, too, to keep an eye on is our moisture doesn't return evenly from, you know, areas aloft and at the surface. Our dew points are starting to increase and all you need to know about these numbers is the more of that deeper green the more saturated we become this is relative to temperature but when you start to see these dew points get north of about 65 that's when it starts to get a little bit more muggy a little bit more oppressive so your driest air still in north to northeast alabama with some of that much more tropical like air returning in areas south temperature wise clanton we're at 69 degrees so good morning from chilton county alexander city at 69 as well aniston is at 70. Aniana showing 59. I find it hard to believe that that's the only 50 on the map. It's probably closer to about 62 up there. But overall, not too bad of a way to start the day today. Here's a look at your hour by hour future view starting at 7 a.m. Partly cloudy skies. Shouldn't see any showers early this morning. Potential fog early on. That's about it. Now, later this afternoon, we may see an isolated pop up shower in the eastern half of the state. Our rain chances are fairly low today as well as th this evening. Our high temperatures are likely going to get into the middle 80s, 85, 86, 87 degrees. And then as we head into the overnight hours, you'll have a chance to potentially see that super moon again. And those temperatures will be cooling into the 70s. So for today, a bit of a range, 86 to about 89 degrees. Partly cloudy skies and that slight chance of, of a shower, very low. I got it at about a 10% on that 10 day forecast. And then tonight, 67 to about 72 as that moisture is slowly on the rise where we're still watching a couple things the strawberry moon i'll let you know how you can see the super moon tonight we're mainly dry through saturday i'll let you know how those rain chances begin to build our high temperatures over the next several days fairly normal will that change as well and an update on the tropics all that coming your way here in just minutes also coming up this morning the race to vaccinate america Next at 6 o'clock, the new report on a rare illness possibly connected to two of the most popular vaccines available. Why doctors say your best bet is still to get the vaccine. Time right now is 610. You're taking a live look at I-5920 there at I-65, that big interchange in downtown Birmingham. Things are looking great if you're headed into the city this morning. We have no major slowdowns in that area, but a reminder, we have a crash in Tuscaloosa. Lurleen Wallace at 11th Street. We are starting to see this clear out a little bit, so perhaps it'll be clear in the next few minutes, which is something to pay attention to if you're headed that direction. Good morning, Alabama. We'll be right back. You're watching the one and only Good Morning Alabama. Good morning, Alabama. Welcome back. A beautiful start to the day out there along the Highway 280 corridor. You can see the sun coming up over the clouds. It's going to be a little warmer today and a little more humid than it was yesterday. Meteorologist Evan Chikavera is back with a sneak peek at the weekend in less than five minutes with the Weather Authority forecast. A CDC panel is revealing a likely association between the vaccine and heart inflammation. Still, experts say that the bigger risk is to not get the vaccine at all. 
ABC's Ike Jachi has the COVID-19 vaccine headlines you need to know. This morning, 34-year-old Colina Anderson of Springfield, Missouri, with a warning about the coronavirus. This is not a fun disease. It's, it's, it's not something to take lightly. She's been battling COVID for the past 10 days inside one of the many Missouri hospitals currently surging with new COVID patients. Uh, the people who still think it's like the flu, it's not. Oh boy, is it not. The more contagious Delta variant is now in at least 48 states, making up nearly half of all infections across parts of the West and Midwest. This morning, a cluster of 17 new cases of the Delta variant found in a Nevada town. The cases are people all under 60 and unvaccinated. We've been seeing much younger patients needing management within the hospital, um, some as young as their late teens, in their 20s, in their 30s, and unfortunately, all of those unvaccinated and very sick. 34% of adults ages 18 to 24 have been vaccinated, the same group that's currently exhibiting one of the highest rates of infection. And now, a new report from a CDC panel finding a likely association between the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines and a rare, mostly mild heart inflammation in younger people. Out of more than 26 million doses given to young people, the CDC confirming 323 cases of the condition after getting a vaccine, mostly in males. Still, experts say the benefits of getting the shot far outweigh the risks. Getting COVID is far more risky than having the vaccine because the heart failure that we see long term from COVID infection can be more and more and more severe. A CDC working group found there isn't enough evidence yet to recommend booster shots right now, but that could change as more data emerges. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. Alabama continues to stay below 200 hospitalizations of COVID-19 patients. In fact, right now there are 193. However, we know that that number is creeping up. Monday, there were 169 patients statewide. COVID-19 deaths may have hit an all-time high or an all-time low, we should say, last month. However, new numbers show that the virus is hitting some communities harder than others. New data shows African Americans and younger people are dying at higher rates, according to data from Johns Hopkins University. Deaths among black Americans accounted for nearly 19% of COVID-19 deaths in May. In the same month, the percent of Asian and Hispanic Americans who died from the virus decreased. Nearly 300 people are still dying of the virus every day here in the U.S. New this morning, the United States is sending 3 million doses of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine to Brazil. Brazil is seeing a surge in new cases, and less than one-third of the country's population is vaccinated. The shipment comes after the U.S. sent 2.5 million doses to Taiwan this past weekend. To help push more Americans to get vaccinated, President Biden will be in Raleigh, North Carolina today. He'll be visiting a mobile vaccination site before kicking off a community canvassing event. About 45% of people in North Carolina are fully vaccinated. If you're looking to help out your local community or help someone in need, ABC 3340 and our parent company, Sinclair Broadcast Group, are partnering with the American Red Cross. You can set up an appointment to donate a unit of blood by logging on to abc3340.com forward slash cares. And if you would like to test your COVID-19 antibodies, you'll get results from your donation in about two weeks. So log on, sign up, and help save lives this summer. It's 617 on this Thursday morning. Meteorologist Evan Chikvera is back with us. And Evan, it's a beautiful start to the day. It really is. You can see that sun coming right through your TV screen this morning. Warm your hands up just a little bit there. Sun's been up now for about an hour. And what we're going to see here over the next hour is probably an increase in those temperatures. We saw an initial decrease. We usually have our morning low, weather permitting, right after the sun comes up. There's a little bit of a delay from the time we warm up and start to look at that warm up here over the next couple of hours. We still have the super moon in place. If you didn't get to see it this morning, uh, we talked about it. Of course, we have to be up at uh, crazy hours of the morning, so that's understandable. But if you want to see it tonight, midnight to 5 a.m., there should be a slight pink or orange like hue to it. It's the final super moon of 2021. And that just simply means it's the last time that we will have the full moon phase and its closest in its orbit to Earth to look a little bit larger. 
where that'll be taking place tonight. Your lunchtime forecast coming before that, of course. Thank goodness we were talking about this. I mean, pizza looks good even at like four in the morning, believe it or not, uh, when you've been up for a little while. So whatever you're doing for lunchtime today, things are looking good. Here's a look at the rest of your hour by hour forecast for this Thursday. Look for those temperatures to range from the middle to upper 80s. Not a huge difference from where we landed temperature wise yesterday. What's going to be slowly changing is the moisture. When that starts to come back, it, there's a noticeable difference in that like perceivable temperature when you walk outside. It gets a little bit more muggy, start to get a little bit more sweaty, stuff like that. Here's a look at your Friday forecast with very limited chances here today. Tomorrow will be very similar to that. Winds though coming in out of the southeast. That's a muggy breeze for us. Some of that tropical air coming back in place and look for high temperatures tomorrow to be in the middle to upper 80s. Head into your weekend now. Partly cloudy skies on Saturday morning. Saturday afternoon, there might be a little bit more in the way of cloud cover. We go from a mostly sunny scenario the next, uh, you know, about 24 to 36 hours to kind of a partly sunny over the weekend with a slight chance of afternoon showers and perhaps a thunderstorm on Saturday. We move ahead to Sunday into Monday, and now you've got a frontal boundary that's going to stall out over the Ohio Valley. We've got that consistent flow coming in from the Gulf of Mexico. That's going to mean a few more thunderstorms in the forecast, scattered showers as well as we go through the day on Sunday as well as into Monday. So what does that mean for the rest of our forecast? Well, a gradual increase in rain chances heading into next week. Nothing that's out of the ordinary, out of character for late June and early July. And as for the tropics, nothing that's going to be impactful for us here locally over the next 10 days. Let's get a check on traffic right now. Taking a live look at the roads this morning. This is the Red Mountain Expressway. They're at University Boulevard right in downtown Birmingham. The camera froze up, but you can see not a lot of volume out there this morning. We did have an earlier accident over in Tuscaloosa on Lurleen Wallace at 11th Street. That has since cleared out. We have no other delays. Had this morning buying a house while owning student loans. Why financial experts say now is the time to consider making that investment. But first, a consumer alert if you've got Verizon, the internet outage impacting customers right here in Alabama. Welcome back. It is now 623. A consumer alert if you have Verizon for your internet or cell phone service. Dozens of outages have been reported here in the Birmingham area, along with Atlanta, some parts of Florida too. According to Verizon, the outage could go until later this morning, hopefully not past 630. Drivers along I-20 will soon have more charging stations for electric vehicles as early as July 4th. A new station is being installed in downtown Oxford by Highway 21. It's the fourth charging station in the area. Others are expected to be installed in Jefferson, Tuscaloosa and Coleman counties. This year's Prime Day saw record shattering sales. The two day event saw the biggest numbers for third party sellers in Amazon's history. In fact, Amazon says third party sellers sold more than the company itself. Worldwide, Prime members bought more than 250 million items. The best selling items, robotic vacuums and coffee makers. And some people are saying give the customers what they want. Some people are a little disappointed with Apple because they want to see a new name for the iPhone 13. The top name getting attention online, iPhone 2021. Rushing to hire enough teachers for the new school year. Next at 630, how local districts are getting creative to lure educators into the classroom. In this morning's GMA First Look, breaking her silence. Britney Spears standing up for herself in an explosive court hearing Wednesday, passionately telling a court she's been exploited, embarrassed and demoralized by the people behind the conservatorship that's controlled her life and finances for the last 13 years, asking that it be terminated. The 39 year old pleading with a judge saying, I just want my life back. She could be heard pounding her fists as she told the judge all she hears from her team is no, 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 saying she feels ganged up on, bullied, left out and alone. I am tired of feeling alone. I deserve to have the same rights as anyone. So what could Spears' testimony mean for the future of her conservatorship? And what happens next? Legal analyst Dan Abrams weighs in live coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kaylee Hartung, ABC News, Los Angeles. This is Good Morning Alabama. Now, live breaking news. That live breaking news right now on GMA at 6.30, a building collapse in Miami. One person is dead, numerous others are trapped. 
Breaking news anchor Catherine Page is up in just moments with what's been happening for hours while you've been sleeping. Also breaking now at 630, a young police officer shot in the head. The urgent manhunt to try to find the shooter and the growing reward. The new body camera footage that could break this case wide open. And a live look outside as the Weather Authority is tracking our local forecast. Meteorologist Evan Chikvera is working for you as we look ahead to the weekend. Good morning, everybody. We're so glad you're here with this. It is a very busy start to this Thursday morning. I'm Sarah Snyder. We are working for you with what you need to know to start out your day. So we begin right now with meteorologist Evan Chikvera and the Weather Authority forecast. Evan, it's going to be a little more humid out there today. A little bit, and we're going to see this pattern kind of con continue as we head towards the weekend. It was really nice to have that little break, a little bit of a reprieve from that mugginess that we get here in late June, but it doesn't last for very long when you talk about weather patterns this time of year. And this morning, while it's not uh, unpleasant by any means, we are seeing slightly warmer temperatures than we did on Wednesday morning. For example, Birmingham's about a 10 degree difference from this time yesterday to this morning. Pell City, a couple degrees warmer as well. We're 70 over in Anniston. Haleyville still seeing some of that cooler air at 61 and a reading of 59 this morning in Aniana there in Blount County. Now, occasionally when you start to see this transition where that dry air is headed out and that more muggy air is back, you'll get a little bit of patchy fog. I'm happy to say that I haven't seen any on our sky cams this morning. No reports of traffic inc incidents out there and visibility appears to be all good as we move forward. Looking ahead to early on this afternoon, temperatures eventually get into the 80s, 85, 86, 87 degrees for a high temperature. Looking ahead to like our overall pattern here, we're going to dive more into this with my full forecast in a few minutes, but some of the heaviest rain is actually going to stay just a couple hundred miles to the north and west of here. The reason behind that and why we could be watching the tropics over the next 10 days for a potential impact, all that coming up in just a couple minutes. We are on top of new updates on that breaking news. Part of a condo collapses in South Florida, killing at least one person. We have just learned three people were taken to the hospital, right? That's actually down from the eight reported initially. It does look like a news conference is set to start here soon, hoping to learn some more information. We have some video to show you here of that collapse of the damage left over right here. You can see that roof of the building now. We've been watching these live feeds all morning long. We have seen crews searching through that building, sometimes with canine units. We also have seen people's lives destroyed in this disaster. Saw part of a child's bunk bed, saw AC units. You can see right there dangling. Those are from the roof. They are dangling down the side of that building. Now we've also learned that this collapse, local reports are saying that this was on the parking garage and pool side of the building. Hopefully that means not a lot of rooms were on that side. Local reports saying this building has 12 stories with more than 100 units. It was built in 1981 and this is in Surfside, Florida in the Miami Beach area. Very popular tourist destination. A lot of condominiums there. That collapse happened around 1:30 this morning. There is no word yet on the cause. We're bringing more updates as we get them. Also happening while you were sleeping, a Florida officer is seriously hurt and police say a shooter is on the loose. Police say the Daytona Beach officer was investigating a report of something suspicious. He found 29 year old Othel Wallace in a car with California plates. Body cam footage shows what happened next, and we do want to warn you before we show you this clip that this is tough to watch. Don't do this. Sit down. Why are you asking me to live here? Do you live here? Yes or no? What's going on though? Charlie 77. Seven, seven. No, back up. Stop. 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 Stop, man. Police say Wallace shot the officer once in the head and then got away. Within the past half hour, we have learned that the officer is 26 years old. The officer is now out of surgery and is in critical condition. Right now, there is a $100,000 reward to try to help authorities find Wallace. Police say he is armed and dangerous. Back here at home, developing from overnight, a Birmingham man is in the hospital after he was shot several times at an apartment complex. Investigators say that the shooting happened at the Onyx apartment complex on Erline Circle in northeast of Birmingham Wednesday night. At this hour, police officers are still searching for a shooter. 
Get breaking news updates anytime, anywhere by downloading our free ABC 3340 News app. It's available for Apple and Android devices. This morning in state education news, local school districts are rushing to try to hire enough teachers before the fall semester begins. Bessemer City Schools this morning at 530 explained how signing bonuses are helping boost application numbers. Now we're hearing from Etowah County Schools battling this current teacher shortage. ABC 3340's Stony Sharp joins us right now. And Stony, this has really turned into somewhat of a competition. It has, Sarah. Good morning. A recruiting competition. Almost all school districts in Alabama are in the fight right now. Etowah County Schools is one of those. Superintendent Dr. Alan Cosby says his district is relying on college graduates to help fill the spots, and he believes the district is in the position to fill all of those, but he would like to see more applicants. Watch. We might have, uh, you know, one position. We might have 15, 20 applicants. Now we might have, you know, five. We rely typically in our area on Jacksonville State University for a good number of our graduates because of uh, their proximity to us. And so, you know, we obviously, you know, recruit from there as well as several other colleges in the state. But we'll also look at alternative certification uh, means as well. And we found that smaller school districts are having the toughest time attracting those teacher candidates. We'll keep you updated live in the studio this morning. Stony Sharp, ABC 3340 News. Tomorrow, former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin is set to be sentenced for the death of George Floyd. He will be sentenced for the most serious charge of second degree murder. The statutory maximum penalty for second degree murder in Minnesota is 40 years. Legal observers do not believe Chauvin will receive the maximum. Today is the big day for President Biden's agenda. Infrastructure and policing regulations are two of the big topics of discussion. Britt Conway reports why the next 24 hours could be crucial. Deal making in D.C. with infrastructure and policing front and center. The divisions of the moment shouldn't stop us from doing the right thing for the future. But the division remains and the countdown is on. The Senate is getting ready to start a two week recess. With infrastructure, we're talking improvement to roads, bridges, water systems, technology, climate related measures, manufacturing, research and development and the caregiving economy and how to pay for it all. But senators on both sides of the aisle say there's an agreement on a bipartisan deal. And today at the White House, they're expected to talk about it with the president. But will it be enough? Depends on who you ask. My sense is that that deal right now has 20 votes, not 60 votes. Um, we're gonna have to take a deep dive into the agreement. Last week, I heard from a lot of my colleagues saying, I just need to look at one other issue. You know, can you do this, can you do that? But uh, there's, there's a lot of interest in having a bipartisan proposal. Same goes for police reform, but that hasn't been easy either. With debate over the standard for charging police officers with crimes and qualified immunity, so police officers can be sued in civil court. A lead senator on the negotiations says today may be a make or break day. All told, it could be a make or break day for Biden. I'm Brett Conway reporting. Tomorrow, Vice President Kamala Harris will be visiting the U.S.-Mexico border. This will be her first trip since being asked to handle the surge at the border. She is facing criticism from both sides of the aisle for not visiting the border to see the problems firsthand sooner. She'll also be making a stop in El Paso, Texas, where people there say that they hope she can bring change. Time is 6.37. We want to send it back over to meteorologist Evan Chikvera for another look at the forecast. Evan, the low humidity was just too good to last in June in Alabama. It, it was. I mean, we're a couple days into the official start of summer, and for us to have that nice little break with those low dew points, cooler temperatures, it was nice. It didn't last too long, though. We still have dry air aloft, so that should keep us mostly sunny for a good chunk of the day today. Those temperatures, though, are marginally different from this time yesterday. We went from the 60s to the 70s in many instances, a couple cooler spots up there. Coleman at 67, Haleyville 61, Anion at 59, Tuscaloosa at 69. 
as well as Centerville. Looking at your hour by hour forecast for the day today, we'll see those temperatures climb into the 80s pretty quickly here as we get to early afternoon, 83, 84 degrees. Now you're noticing in the eastern half of the state, uh, say over near Chambers County, an isolated shower or two popping up by early afternoon. We will have that threat today. I think our rain chances overall this afternoon as well as on Friday are pretty low, so I'm not overly concerned about a rain chance today. But if you get a cooling off shower, no big deal. That sunshine will come back out and eventually our temperatures all across the state will top out in the middle to upper 80s. Only chance of seeing a 90 degree temperature is probably well down I-20 closer to the Mississippi state line. We stay partly cloudy overnight tonight, 67 to about 72 degrees. Moisture continues to slowly return and not quite as cool tomorrow. I don't think we'll see any 50s on the map. It'll be upper 60s to lower 70s as we start the day on Friday. Next weather maker is, I guess you could call it a weather maker. It's kind of the next thing we're looking at is our chances of rain. So let's break this down for you. This is Sunday at 7 a.m. We're dry for much of the day on Saturday, but look at our surface winds here. They're coming out of the southeast. What this does, it transfers moisture from over the Gulf to back over central Alabama. You have another feature in play. That's a kind of stalled out frontal boundary. As this gets closer, along with that tropical air kind of converging here, we'll look at better rain chances Sunday afternoon into Monday afternoon. And what are our impacts going to be? Just more scattered showers a few thunderstorms, and it's going to be more humid. Those dew points will be back in the 70s. You'll get that heat index factor. But oddly enough, because of that increase in rain, June 30th through the 4th of July, we're actually looking at below average temperatures across much of the southeast and the southern Great Plains. So just find that pretty interesting. We'll see if this holds up moving forward, but that would mean our temperatures instead of at about 90 degrees would be a little bit closer to the middle and upper 80s. And that's kind of what our 10 day showing as it stands now. Pop up showers and storms are a little bit more numerous and widespread coming up next week. After more than 200 days in the hospital, why this Alabama man's family says he is not giving up the fight of his life. Time right now is 640, taking a live look at I-459 there at Liberty Parkway. Things are moving very smoothly if you're headed into Birmingham this morning. We have no accidents, no major slowdowns all across the board. Stick around. Good morning, Alabama. We'll be right back. You're watching the one and only Good Morning Alabama. Good morning, Alabama. Welcome back. Time right now is 643. Experts are trying to figure out if heart inflammation and the vaccines are linked. However, new data shows the positives of the vaccine outweighs the negative. Medical reporter Liz Bonas has the information you need to know. The majority of these heart inflammation cases of concern were in young people ages 16 to 24 after the second dose of the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine. But a summary of the data presented still said the benefits of the vaccine, even in this age group, outweigh the risk. But they also stated... It's still relatively early and um, you know we're still um, collecting information. The panel said there were nearly 800 reported cases of heart problems to the vaccine safety monitor system as of last month. Not all were the two likely linked to the vaccine known as myocarditis which is an inflammation of the heart and pericarditis which is an inflammation of the membrane surrounding the heart. People may get things like uh, chest pain, uh, difficulty breathing when they take a deep breath. Um, those are the main uh, symptoms of it. Dr. Stephen Blatt told me it's treated with anti-inflammatories or steroids and generally. Most of the people get over it just like you do any uh, of the side effects that are known to be associated with the mRNA vaccines. But the panel today said long term follow up is needed to know that for sure. So I think we're we're early right now in this analysis and we need to continue monitoring and to accumulate more data. The other thing that was interesting and discussed at this meeting is that the heart inflammation is very different and not the dangerous inflammatory condition seen in children who do get the virus known as MISC. This syndrome is remarkable and have never seen it before. As with other vaccine side effects, it's likely now that from this meeting there will be recommendations to watch for heart inflammation symptoms, who's most at risk for them, and to weigh your individual benefit versus risk with your own health care provider. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus reporting. 
An Alabama man spent the past 209 days, 209 days in the hospital battling COVID-19 complications. 51 year old Tim Malden tested positive for the virus all the way back on Thanksgiving Day after complaining of breathing issues. Right now, his wife says a breathing machine is keeping him alive. He is such a fighter and he said, I, I'm just not, I'm not ready and I'm going to keep, keep doing and keep going and doing as much as I can uh, for as long as I can. And, and that's what he's done. Medical bills for him total now more than $2 million. Friends and family have helped cover hotel and travel expenses. If you would like to help out, you can go to abc3340.com for more information. Alabama continues to stay below 200 hospitalizations of COVID-19 patients. In fact, right now there are 193. However, we know that number is creeping up. Monday, there were 169 patients statewide. A new baseball coach is headed to UAB. His name is Casey Dunn. He is the son of the late Sammy Dunn, a legendary coach at Vestavia Hills. Dunn is the all time winningest coach at Samford, racking up 530 wins. The chance to take a UAB team to the next level was a challenge Dunn says he could not pass up. I think we did a great job at Sanford of making Sanford baseball Birmingham's team. And now I got to change that and I got to make UAB Birmingham's team. And uh, and, you know, that's a goal that we, we've got a mighty task because of what we built on the other side of the hill. But uh, but that's the goal. Sanford already hired a new coach, Tony David. He has been on Dunn staff for 17 years. Alabama could have another Olympian headed to Tokyo, this time in the women's hammer throw. Bessemer native Octavia Fluker has been accepted to compete at the Olympic team trials today. Fluker is the first University of South Alabama athlete to compete in the event since 2012. Time right now is 648. Meteorologist Evan Chikvera is back with another look at the forecast. Evan, it's Pick City time this Thursday. Where are we headed? All right, it is Pick City time. We head a little north of the general area to Winston County. As a matter of fact, we're headed to a little town called Addison. It's right there, uh, situated right along Highway 278 there, just a little bit to the west of I-65. Later on today, we're looking at temperatures climbing into the 80s. Very, very slim chance of a shower. Overall, we are looking at a partly cloudy night summer afternoon. Today's winner is Ellen Oliver from Addison. So thank you, Ellen, for sending that one in. And if you want to be part of our Pick City kind of sweepstakes, you can send in your information to Pick City at ABC 3340, if I can talk, dot com. Simple as that. And we'll go through the winners uh, each day. We'll pick another one for your Friday. Here's a look at the water vapor imagery as it stands now. We have still have some dry air in place aloft, starting to see a little bit of moisture return to those middle levels. That'll give us a few clouds here this afternoon, but overall things are looking okay. Another thing that's changed, we're a little bit warmer. Remember those temperatures yesterday showing some 50s on the map? Not necessarily today, a lot more 60s and 70s out there. Still a nice morning uh, by all standards here for late June. This is actually where we're supposed to be for this time of year. So planning ahead for the day today, partly cloudy skies, a range of temperatures, about a three degree spread today from 86 to about 89 degrees with a very slight chance of a shower. Our sunrise was a little bit after 530 sunset at eight o'clock. Some of the longest daylight hours of the year happening right now. And then overnight tonight, moisture does return. We're not quite as cool. It's not going to be incredibly muggy, but it slowly is getting that way over the next couple of nights. And with a partly cloudy sky tonight, you should be able to see that super moon. Now, a super moon is just fancy talk for whenever the Earth or the moon is in orbit around the Earth, it's elliptical. So that means at times it's a little bit closer, at times it gets a little bit further. This is the last time the full moon phase and the closest distance between the Earth and the moon will happen at the same time. You'll get a slight orange or pink tint. You can see that from midnight tonight till fr uh, about 5 a.m. on Friday, and it's the final one of 2021. So there's your fun fact for Thursday. Let's start you off on now your Friday morning forecast. Partly cloudy skies, temperatures in the upper 60s to lower 70s, and we'll once again be looking at partly cloudy skies. Wind direction tomorrow will be coming in out of the east to southeast at about 5 to 10 miles per hour, allowing those temperatures once again to reach the middle and upper 80s. Friday night into Saturday morning, another partly cloudy overnight setup. Our temperatures very uh, pretty much right on the nose there, upper 60s 
70, 71, 72 for your Saturday morning. And then into Saturday afternoon, we go slight chance of an afternoon shower, maybe a rumble of thunder. Again, I think our period right now through Saturday evening is more on the dry side than wet. All right, let's take a bit of a journey now over to the eastern Atlantic. This is the African coastline right here. And you're seeing a pretty strong tropical wave coming off the African coast. We're going to watch this one. Pretty good chance over the next five days or so that we'll see some development. It's going to move into some warm Atlantic waters. We're still watching another little wave here just to the east of the Caribbean that right now is not showing many signs, but we'll keep an eye on it here as it gets ever closer. There's a look at your 10 day forecast. Overall, a very, very typical summertime pattern for late June, early July. Evan helps you prepare for the day ahead, but when we're not on the air, keep up with the weather anytime, anywhere with the ABC 3340 weather app. Updated forecast, weather alerts that follow you on the go, and my weather blog, all at your fingertips. Download the ABC 3340 weather app and take us with you. At 6.54, it is time for your GMA morning rush. We are on top of several big breaking stories this morning, and we start right now at the live desk with breaking news anchor Catherine Page. And we have new updates just in about this condo collapse in South Florida. This is a live look at that scene right now. The mayor of Surfside just said it is unclear how many people are still accounted for. Crews are searching the debris and damaged units to find anyone still trapped. So far, authorities say one person have died, has died, nine others were hurt. It is not clear what caused this collapse around 1.30 this morning. The rest of the building has been evacuated. We'll bring you more updates as we get them. Alabama's teacher shortage, local school districts rushing to hire enough teachers before the fall semester. Bessemer City Schools is offering signing bonuses right now for certain teaching positions. Etowah County Schools is relying on college graduates to fill the spots. Lawmakers could finally have an infrastructure deal done. Senators on both sides of the aisle say that there is an agreement and they will meet with the president today to talk about it. A Birmingham man is in the hospital after he was shot several times at an apartment complex. Investigators say the shooting happened on Erline Circle Wednesday night. Police officers are still searching for the shooter. Let's get a last check on traffic right now. Live look at downtown Birmingham. This is I-5920 there at 65. Most of Birmingham is looking okay. We're not seeing any major slowdowns other than there are starting to build, uh, build in some backups from North Birmingham down into the city of Birmingham. We're seeing those slowdowns on the southbound side of 65. Not sure if that's because of an accident yet, but we'll keep watching that for you. Also over in Leeds, we are seeing some delays because of road work. We have this every every morning just about I-20 to eastbound side near Kelly Creek Road. Those backups headed over to the Bucky's area. So just be advised of that if you're headed eastbound on I-20. And weather shouldn't really have a, too much of an impact here on traffic either today, this evening or tomorrow morning as we look to be pretty consistent here. Temperatures in the upper 60s to lower 70s. What you can expect for this afternoon is for those highs to get in the middle 80s, 86 to about 89 degrees. Very slight chance of a shower in eastern Alabama. Overall, we look fairly dry through Saturday with better rain chances to come as we head into next week and I can't believe that we're like knocking on the door of the fourth. Almost there. Yeah. June was like that. Yeah. yeah. Bye bye. Where did it go? <laughs> exactly. Hey, you know, All we're just glad to finally see some sunshine, right? And we're talking about school this morning. Oh, yes, starting no, in no time. Starting exactly. soon before you know it. <laughs> Thanks so much for being with us this morning. We'll be back at 7:23. Have a great day everybody.